What's up guys, Jay's Two Cents here, and we are going to continue with our minimum specs investigations with modern games to see whether or not you can actually play these AAA titles at their minimum requirements. And up today, it's probably one of the most popular games to hit the market over the last year, just absolutely sweeping when it comes to popularity, and that being PUBG, or Player Unknown's Battleground. Really weird name, but PUBG, you probably heard of it by now at least. Spoil the ones you love this Valentine's Day with the gift of awesome portable gaming performance from MSI. Featuring Intel i7 processors, Nvidia graphics, and high refresh rate displays, nothing says I love you like MSI. And just to show how much we love you here at J's Two Cents, we're giving away two MSI Optics 27-inch gaming monitors worldwide. To learn more about MSI's lineup of gaming laptops and to enter our Valentine's Day giveaway, click the link in the description below. So if you've heard any previous rumors about this game or about it being unoptimized or just poor performing, that's probably true considering up until this point it was considered an early access title. You know what early access means. It means give us your money now because we want your money now. We don't want to earn it yet and hopefully we get all the bugs fixed, but if you experience any bugs then well, we're still developing it, so. I digress, guys. What we are going to do right here is we are going to test this with the minimum settings and then make a couple of upgrades to the system to see how it performs. So the minimum requirements for PUBG is Windows 7 or higher. We are running Windows 10. And Intel Core i3-4340, which I don't have, so I opted to go with the AMD FX series and it's recommending a 6300. Now, I don't have a 6300, I have a 6100. So we're talking Bulldozer here versus, I think it was Piledriver? Piledriver, I think, was, was the successor to Bulldozer. But anyway, I looked up user benchmark reviews to see what the difference in performance between the two was, and it was anywhere between 9 to 11% across the board faster, the 6300 anyway. So what I did was I applied a 10% overclock to my 6100, did a benchmark run and a couple of other benchmarks to see how it compared, and I was spot on. So I pretty much have got my 6100 running at 6300 speeds, so stock 6300 speeds. So obviously your performance can improve if you overclock, and uh, that's no different here. So memory, it's recommending six gigabytes of video memory. It's a weird number. I don't have two gigabyte sticks laying around. So I've got a single eight gig stick of DDR3, uh, running 1600. So it's Corsair Vengeance RAM running 1600. And I've got a GTX 660 installed, which is what it recommends. If you have an AMD side of things, the equivalent would be BHD 7850. Don't have one of those. So we are running a 6100 overclock to 6300, eight gigs of RAM with a single stick. So single channel, not dual channel. And we are running a GTX 660. And of course you need 30 gigabytes of space. We are running this on an SSD and it's already running right here. So let's just jump right in. If we take a look at the settings, um, you can see we got our fraps counter up in the corner. It's showing 42 frames per second in the menu. Give us a mixture of settings between medium and low, mostly medium. I think the post-processing and anti-aliasing is what's going to be hitting our FPS the most. So I'm going to go ahead and drop those down to low right now and see what happens to our counter up in the corner. So you know, it only went up one FPS. So I think when we get into the game, we'll see some improvement there. Yeah, so let's go ahead and just get in here and see how it goes. Now, I'm a terrible PUBG player. I'm really, really bad. No judging. Make fun all you want. I'm terrible. I've never gotten a chicken dinner. I think I, my profile shows I've killed one person. So, what? <laughs> Whatever, it is what it is. This is all about the FPS, not how good I can play. So it's not looking too promising yet. I don't think we're gonna be hitting 1080, 60 FPS necessarily. The closer we get to the ground, I guess we'll see. But right now while we're flying through the air, even looking up at the clouds, I'm not able to get that 60 FPS. I miss the tree, oh the tree, tree, tree. Oh God, oh God. <laughs> I would be one of those guys who gets stuck in a tree if I ever went parachuting. Yeah, so as you can see, we're sitting about 40 FPS right here. And you gotta ask yourself, at what point are you willing to trade off frames per second for the sake of just being able to play the game? So I'd like to try and stay alive long enough to change the settings here. So let's see if I just go ahead and drop this down to low. It's low settings all around. And you can see we gained about five FPS here inside the building. Not looking too promising here. Without the anti-aliasing and the view distance, it's probably very dangerous to be walking around outside. But as you can see outside here, we're still only getting high 30s, low 40s on the FPS. Let's go down to very low, see if that's possible. I didn't really change anything. So we're gonna go down to 720p, and that seemed to help a little bit. Let's go with medium 720. Nope. 
low 720? Okay, what if we do this? What if we do medium, and we go low post-processing, low anti-aliasing? I mean, okay, I mean, we can play. The FPS has certainly improved. It's just under 60, but we're, we're not gonna be hitting 1080p 60 FPS, even on the very low settings. So what I think we'll do after this is we will overclock this graphics card a little bit to see what happens. The problem is it looks like we're playing through like a fuzzy filter, if that makes sense. Okay, so all I did right now is overclock the graphics card 75 megahertz on the core and 100 megahertz on the RAM. I'm gonna go ahead and bump up the fan a little bit too so that we don't get any thermal throttling or any, any possibility of that. I wanna keep that speed going. And you can see in the menu, we already jumped up to 68. Now, 720, that was terrible. I would rather game at the lowest possible settings in 1080 than even higher settings in 720, unless I had a 720p monitor. Going down to 720 on a 1080p monitor is more, it looks, looks terrible compared to just playing at native resolution. Now, this is not the exact same map, and that's gonna be what's hard about testing something like PUBG is the fact that the maps are, you know, there's different maps. But it's, it seems to be a pretty consistent gaming experience. And as you can see now in the starting area, we're sitting up in the 60s already. It's because we're, we're on very low. I'm gonna change these settings real quick. See if we can't just go low and see what happens. Okay, so low put us into the 40s, 50s. So I'm gonna go very low post-processing. See, that bumped us up right there. So post-processing seems to be a big hit on the system right there. Unfortunately, it's not translating to as equal of a performance increase in the game. As you can see, we are down into the 20s. So I don't know how much of that's gonna be the airplane, but I think once we're down the ground and all the textures have loaded, then, and this is gonna be VRAM right here, all these textures popping in and stuff, that's gonna be highly VRAM related. Remember, we're only running two gigabytes of VRAM in this. I have a feeling there's gonna be a lot of people coming right here. Oh yeah. <laughs> Uh-oh. Okay, yeah, I don't think I like the overclock. All right, so 75 megahertz wasn't working on the core. I went ahead and dropped it down to 50 and I reduced the mem, well, I left the memory at 100 because I'm pretty sure the memory is going to be fine. So let's try that again. Oh, I hear gunshots. Okay, so yeah, I mean, it looks like we're still chilling in the upper 40s. What would be great is if I just killed one person. Just one person, that's all I ask. Yeah, we are still looking at the mid 30s, upper 40s, and 1080. 1080 with the minimum requirements is not looking too good. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why did he climb over the, the wall right there when there was a big opening? All right, one last attempt here. 1080p, very low. Yeah, so even the very low settings with this hardware is not going to yield us 60 FPS. I killed a guy. Wow. Sounds are all jacked up, did you hear that? So obviously we're not gonna get 1080p, 60 FPS at any settings, even with overclocking this a little bit, uh, with the minimum requirements. So 720p, 60, sure, on low settings, if you have a 720p monitor. I... So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a, a small upgrade to this machine. I could go straight to the recommended, which is a Ryzen 5 1600, a 1066 gigabyte or higher, or a Core i5 7600. It doesn't even have an AMD recommendation for the graphics card, which is kind of funny for the recommended settings, it doesn't have AMD. So what I'll do right now is I'll just grab another graphics card, something that's not quite as far as a 1060, but we'll see how we, this goes. And I'm gonna add another stick of RAM into this to give it dual channel and kind of see what happens. Remember, we're on DDR3 here, so what I'm trying to avoid by going to that next recommended is going to DDR4, because I know that's gonna increase the cost of the system significantly given the price of RAM and especially graphics cards. So the idea here is we have the mindset of we had an old system that we maybe found some Craigslist deals and we're gonna try and give ourselves a better gaming experience for not a lot of money. So our hypothetical system was upgraded via Craigslist. That's the idea here. You guys keep telling me to use used parts in these videos, so that's what we're doing. We added another stick of matched RAM. So now we have 16 gigs of DDR3 running at 1600. And I upgraded the, the graphics card to a Nitro uh, 380X 
from Sapphire. So this is a four gigabyte card, significantly more powerful than GTX 660. And we are running the same exact motherboard CPU combo as before, an FX6100 on a 970 chipset but I've pushed the overclock even farther. We have more cooling headroom, so we push the overclocks to 4.4. That's now giving us nearly a one gigahertz overclock from factory. So the question now is, can we now play at 1080p? And, and regarding pricing of this graphics card, I looked it up. I looked up the price of 380Xs on eBay. Just like anything else, there's definitely some fluctuation. There's one up here for $400 that's way overpriced, but I, I'm looking at one right now for $229. So yeah, they, there's definitely some fluctuating prices. Kind of the downside of when you're trying to deal with used stuff as your results are going to vary based on your region. So let's fire this back up and see what happens. Already the system is much more snappy just because of the fact that we have so much more overclock happening and dual channel memory. Dual channel is probably gonna be the bigger upgrade here than anything, at least when it comes to system resources. Well, our menu FPS has jumped significantly up to 100 FPS. So uh, there's that. I mean, that's an improvement. I'm not gonna bother changing the settings until I get into a match though. We've seen the menu doesn't mean anything. That's way smoother than it was before. Holy crap. <laughs> There's nothing like PUBG. See right now with the 1080p low settings or very low settings, we're getting nearly 90 FPS. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna go ahead and try and find some cover here in a rock. We're gonna go back to medium. Let's see what happens if we go medium. So our FPS looks like it's sticking still in the 60s. So we're looking at 66, 63. Uh, this is doable. This is very doable. And I probably should get myself Oh, I'm, I'm so gonna die. I'm, I'm, I'm so screwed. All right, let's see how much we can get done here while we at least, uh, yeah, I, I'm so far out of the, the play area, it's not even funny. I'm like on an island practically over here. I am on an island, geez. So let's see what happens if I bump this up even more. So now we're on 1080 high. Let's kind of do a look around to get everything to pop in and load. We're loading new textures and looks like we're sitting right around 57. 58, not bad. So what if we go ahead and take our settings here and we take post-processing and put that to medium and anti-aliasing to medium. So we gain one FPS. Anti-aliasing very low, not really changing a whole lot. I mean, we were able to achieve the 1080p 60 frames per second uh, on medium and high settings, right? We're on high settings with a mixture of high and medium and we are actually getting Pretty smooth experience given the level of our hardware. I mean, remember, this is a this is a very low-end CPU. I know that some people probably aren't gonna like hearing that, but this CPU is dated. It was the initial architecture that launched the FX series, the bulldozer. It was unfortunately terrible with IPCs. It just didn't really live up to the standard, and it is pushing seven, yeah, seven years old. It came out in 2011, guys. Seven-year-old CPU running PUBG and we are getting a 60 FPS average here. Oh, we're, we're getting pretty damn close to the 60 FPS number. And I haven't even overclocked the GPU yet, so I'm going to go ahead and overclock this graphics card slightly and see if this helps at all. So I just overclocked it uh, about 60 megahertz. It's nothing incredibly, you know. There, let's go to 1150. Let's bump the memory up to 1600 and we're still going. And we just crashed. I think the takeaway here is that if you go up to the recommended and go with a 1066 gigabyte and an i5-7600K or a Ryzen 1600, you're obviously going to play 1080p high setting 60 FPS, no problem whatsoever. The fact that we were able to do it on this CPU and this much older recommended hardware, then hey, there you go, it shows PUBG has come a long way. Anyway guys, thanks for watching today's video. If you have any recommendations on games that we should do this with, I, I, I like doing this sort of testing. I think it's exciting. And I think this is much more realistic to the average gamer, because I think this PC represents more of what is in the average home than obviously what you see here in this studio. So sound off in the comments below guys, tell me what you think of today's video and what games you think we should test. Thanks for watching guys, and as always, I'll see you in the next one.